why um, oh, it's, listen it's the reason why it's, it's the Trump reason why was elected, so many he's he's cut down well, it's Jeb also, Bush it's also partially responsible for why we went you know when you're talking about how the left went so out of control you know a lot of this was because the George W. Bush administration ended in such disaster yes. that it was almost like they had no seat at the table anymore. I mean, look, you know that he had the highest was, and lowest approval yes, ratings of every yes. president. Oh, when, after 9 11, yeah, he had, he had the highest approval rating. Approval and look, rating. also, the time he was the, out of office, it was like 20%. This, this might be almost hard or for, I think, younger people. You know, like I go, I, I do a lot of shows and I, I have a young audience. So I'll talk to like 20 year olds and stuff. And they don't really, you know, they were like babies when this was happening. They're but babies now. Well, yeah, but they, but they don't like remember it. I'm saying that there's, you almost feel like there's, the left just controls the broader culture. But this actually was not the case immediately following 9-11. The culture had a very right-wing mood to it. It was very much about like patriotism and hierarchy and military and go America, which was a natural response to being attacked, you know? And it was very much like, and essentially, the American people, as you mentioned, the highest approval ratings in, since we've been recording, presidential approval ratings, the American people gave George W. Bush a blank check yep. to fight this yep. war on terrorism. Yep. They go, you have whatever war you want, whatever action you want, whatever policy you want, yeah, if you want to grope us at the yeah. airports, if you want to torture people, Enter the Patriot you, want to open, Act. you want to open Guantanamo Bay, the Patriot Act, the Department of Homeland Security being created, whatever you want. And, and he spent this blank check on two wars in Iraq and Afghanistan that led to the deaths of uh, over a million people. And what, what we got for it in turn was our bravest young men blowing their brains out by the tens of thousands at the, at the price tag of trillions of dollars and the region completely destabilized anyway. Just nothing but, I mean, Lockheed Martin nothing, and Raytheon got a that. lot out yeah. of it, you know. There's a whole bunch, if you look in uh, Washington, D.C., there's a whole bunch of millionaires out there uh, in Washington, D.C. who did very, yeah. who did very yeah. well yeah. off I of it. I talked about this yeah. the other day, the, the, the zip codes with the highest, uh, what is it, incomes? A every crime, yes. that the zip code with the highest crime in every category. It doesn't matter, a burglary, you're talking about murder, everything, the highest, number one, yeah. is D.C., but the city also, with the most people making over two hundred thousand yeah. dollars a year, yeah. is DC, and all of them are making that because the they're in some the way, some way politically connected. The entire connected. country, including New York, in yeah. including LA, Newport Beach, Miami, DC's number one most people making over two hundred thousand dollars per year. So, but anyway, just to my point. So then after, and of course now this. So this is what we get out of George W. Bush's blank check, and then on top of that, his his uh, his presidency ends with the worst financial crash in a hundred years. Yeah. So it was just like, so like it was like so obvious. So, and, and this is why Barack Obama is elected because he was the most anti-George W. Bush thing that people could think of, right? And then o Obama comes in and continues all of the Bush policies after running on, I'm going to repeal all of these policies. And then, oh, and, and look, there was a pivot. It was right, it was in 2012. Okay, it was when Obama was running for re-election. And what did Obama come out and say for his re-election campaign? Did he come out and say, hey, look, remember I told I you I would close Guantanamo Bay? And I did it. No, he couldn't say that. Did he say I ended the war in Iraq? Nope. No, he couldn't say that. Did he say we're not torturing people anymore? Did he say we're not dropping bombs? No, in fact, by this point in 2012, not only had Obama continued the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, he had also launched a stupid regime change war in Libya. He was starting to fund a civil war in Syria. And he, uh, well, maybe he had the drone bomb campaigns in Yemen and Pakistan. So what did he say? He's got this base of liberals who he hasn't done anything that he promised. So what did he say? I'm for gay marriage. I'm the first right. president who's ever been for gay marriage. And they put the White House up with the pride flag colors. And if you go look at it, this was, this was a concerted effort from the top. You can go look. There are these nexus charts where you can map out words in major publications. I'm not talking about mom and pop news outlets. I'm talking about the New York Times, the Washington Post, like the big dogs. Go track how many times the word racism was mentioned. And around 2012, it shoots up. Yep. Social justice shoots up. Transgenderism shoots up. White privilege shoots up. This was forced on the American people. Why are we having these conversations now? No, the people did not wake up one day and decide, we want to have a national conversation about chicks with dicks. That didn't happen. 
This wasn't an organic <laughs> movement. It was all of the most powerful people decided this is what we're going to talk about. And why was that? Because it's the perfect look. When you're failing on policy, you pivot to a culture war. Yep. You pit people yep. against each other, so they're fighting each other. Yep. We had in this country, we had an Occupy Wall Street movement where leftists were standing outside of big banks screaming, we are the 99%. Right-wingers had a populist movement called the Tea Party, where yep. they were outraged about the bailouts of big banks, yep. unsustainable debt, government spending. They don't like that. That's not what the powers that be like. You're getting too close. Look, they like you fighting about issues like abortion. Now, I'm not saying abortion isn't a very important issue. It's a very important issue. But the, us fighting about that issue doesn't scare anyone at the Federal Reserve. It doesn't scare anyone in the CIA. They don't care if you fight about that issue. They love you fighting over transgender bathrooms. Yep. They have no, and you can see this every day. They're stoking this culture war because they have to, to distract from the fact that they completely failed on everything else. That everything in the 20th century so far for America, politically speaking, has been a disaster. It's what like have distracting they people with a submarine. Huh? They distract you with the submarine, but the other issues are going like on that, too They well. love stories like that. Yeah. CNN loves an airplane crashing. They love yeah. something where it'll get clicks and no powerful people will be upset about it. If they actually loved real stories that just got clicks, there's a lot of stories that get clicked. They've been passing them up for years. It's part of the reason why shows like this, shows why jo like Joe Rogan, are taken off. Because they can run stories. Hey, do you think that like people getting vaccine injured is not a story that would generate a lot of views? for CNN, the vaccine that the government just mandated has hurt all of these people. That's a huge story. Why won't they run it? Because all their commercials are freaking pharmaceutical companies. Yep. They don't want to piss off powerful interests, so they're not in the game of that. So they have to create something for you to be afraid of, you know, right. white supremacist terrorism is everywhere, you know? Like we talked about with the tyrants, Big Pharma. Oh yeah, right? we huge, say this. We, we talk about this on podcasts all the time, right, Pat? There's two countries in that the world. Rant that rant was. Uh, listen, I'm still on that. That rant, was amazing. Man. That was. It makes some noise for a day, yeah. man. I was unbelievable on what, <laughs> what was you just said there. Thank but, you. You know, I want to go to the next yeah. story. I want to go to the next story. I, I I will tell you guys, the last rant, what it did confirm that the biggest threat to America is no longer chicks with dicks. That was very important <laughs> to know that. Thank you for don't that. Ask, don't tell. Hold on. Good. Good. You didn't let me finish yeah, the rant. <laughs> it, it gets there. Uh, so now next, it is one, next one, I want to talk about what's going on in Hollywood. Anybody?